So now we're going to go on this big tour of WBPP. I think that this version should be stable enough that much of the information I'm going to tell you is going to be the same for time going forward, hopefully. <laughs> but one thing that is absolutely certain is the information that I'm about to give, especially when it comes to the calibration of data, requires that you understand literally the process of calibrating data of what biases darks and flats are, how you make masters of each of these file types. I explain that in another set of two videos, uh, two videos that are exclusively on the calibration of astronomical data. It actually applies to everything. It's not just a WBPP thing, but I explained it in such a way that it parallels everything I'm about to show you in WBPP. So please, Watch those two videos first. Don't even watch this if you have not seen those two calibration videos. And with that out of the way, I will now continue. So the idea of WBPP is the first thing we have to do is load the information, load the data. Data that we load is going to show up in these four tabs, biases, darks, flats, and lights. If we have each of those file types, we'll load them or populate each of these things. We may not always have each of every type, but this is where they're going to end up when we load them. The buttons down here at the bottom, they are the things that control how the data is loaded. There's a slight difference in the behavior between these buttons, and that's the first thing I want to explain. We're just going to concern ourselves with loading information, and I have a data set that I'm going to use just as an example so that I have something to uh, show you visually on the screen. The one that I think is the, the most general button to press is this one. It's the files button. So if we have a set of files like this that we want to load, now my file name actually says what they are, but that's not how WBPP is determining what kind of file it is it's reading the FITS header. When you press that files button, which is what I did here, it reads the FITS header to determine which of these places to put those files in. Now you'll notice I pressed the files button. I said, please load those files and nothing shows up here. Well, they're not lights. If you look in that box, in the bin, in the bias tab, you'll, saw, you'll see all of the biases are loaded there. So, uh, you know, you just have to keep track of where you've put things. Please look in the correct spot. The directory button um, has a slightly different behavior. So I'm going to demonstrate that now. I'm going to hit the reset here. You'll see me do this often. I'm just clearing things. I reset all parameters, clear all file lists like this. And if I go to the directory button, I have a directory which has lots of data. In fact, this is a fairly complex data set. The data set that I'm showing right here is data that was taken across two years and it's a mosaic of two frames. So it's lots of different kinds of data, but this will allow me to show you lots of things um, in WBPP. But if I go back a directory, like, uh, I didn't do that very well. If I, I can't see, hold on, there. If I go back a directory, the main directory under which all three of those are located it's called Draco Nebula, this one. This is the one that has all that stuff. So if I hit the root, if I look at the root directory and all the children directory are under it, it recursively will go into each of those directories and look at all of the files that are there. So it's like a recursive files button. That's what the directory button does. So I'm gonna go ahead and select folder. Now this time, things don't uh, load instantly because <laughs> it has a lot of files to read here. It found, how many files did it find here? It found 597 files. Okay, so one of the important things about this directory button is that if you have files there that are not either the raw data, raw light frames, or calibration data, if you already have process files under that directory, then it'll load those too. And it'll even try to load things that aren't even relevant files. In this particular case, I have a little icon that's for the project name or something like that. See how it says it found this bundle.ico file? That isn't an actual real file. So where did it put it? It probably put it in the lights here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And if you look in the lights, you'll see it found that. So what do you do? Well, I clear it, but my 
uh, important suggestion is, of course, make sure that any files, that if you're going to use this directory button, make sure that it's clean underneath of that root directory so that everything else that under it are actual files that you want to load. So don't just believe it. Be sure to go look, you know, and make sure that what we're looking at here are lights. Here are flats. You can see that they are discriminated by filter type. And then there are dark frames here that should be discriminated by exposure time, of course. Uh, and then there's the bias frames that I have here. So these first two buttons work because they read the FITS header. But what if you don't have anything in your FITS header? So I am going to clear this again. What if I had DSLR type files where I took pictures of, you know, the Milky Way, the sky, and then I took other pictures where the shutter was closed or I had the cap on, but the camera doesn't record a FITS header. It doesn't even have FITS files, really. And so there isn't a way to distinguish between the frames that were stars and the frames that are dark frames, effectively. So what I can do is I can point, um, I can, I should really say, I can call whatever files that I load a particular type by using these buttons. So these buttons here, whatever files I load, go into these tabs directly. So you are casting those files as a particular type. And just to demonstrate how that works, I'm going to do the wrong thing. I am going to go to, well, these are biases, right? But I'll even do worse than that. These are true light frames right here. These are light frames. And in the file headers, it says a file type of light. But if I click on this button for dark frames, you'll notice that it gets loaded in the darks, even though they are light frames. So you wouldn't want to do this, but this demonstrates the idea that when you press this button, whatever you point at, uh, files that you load, they are going to go directly into the place of that particular type, that you, uh, whichever one of these buttons, bias, darks, flats, and lights. Now that's important for the reason that I uh, specified in that sometimes the information might be incorrect in your file, or perhaps you have the kind of data that doesn't have um, headers associated with it. This, these buttons actually are the ones that I tell beginners to often use first, because sometimes there's some confusion about file types, about uh, some things that might be strange, and I'll give you an example. Let me just go ahead and say the common example. One of the common examples is that people um, with some cameras have to generate dark frames for their flat field images, and they are called by many people flat darks. But oftentimes beginners think of them as being flat field images because they are associated with flats, but they're not flat field images at all. They're just dark frames. If, however, uh, this be person who maybe didn't realize that took the images using their, you know, their acquisition software and labeled them as you put a little, you know, you pull down a little box or whatever, label them as uh, flat field images, even though they're dark frames, then if you used one of these two buttons, it would load into the incorrect place. It would load those dark frames into the flats bin here. And that causes all kinds of confusion. Whereas if you would, if the person who, you know, had done this knew that they were dark frames, then when they pressed the button here to load the darks, it would have went into the right place, even though they were mislabeled in the FITS header. So that's the whole thing. These buttons I often tell people to use exclusively in the beginning because they know in their, in their brain, in their mind, what they're loading. And if there's any mistake in loading, they know they did it. There's no way to, uh, quote unquote, blame it on WBPP because it, something about the reading of the FITS header was odd. The final button here is a little bit harder for me to demonstrate, but I think it's going to make sense given what I've just said. Uh, there are some times where there may be, again, no information in a, in a file where you need to provide information. Like, for example, if I really didn't have any information about the time 
uh, the exposure time for a dark frame. Often DSLR images, they do have the time. But if it didn't have the time, or maybe you have a set of flat field images that uh, because your filter was not named, labeled properly, or it was misaligning um, on filters, you know, you have blue filter data, but it's actually red. Well, any kind of data that you load with the custom button here, you can, ch you can specify everything about it in terms of its type. You can call it a flat field image. You can specify what is the color. Perhaps it was HA. And perhaps it's, you know, some people might ha have misnamed their filter. Instead of it being HA, it needed to be H alpha. So you can uh, name it like this as necessary. You would specify the binning and uh, the appropriate uh, exposure time. That might be uh, appropriate in, in order to match files. Uh, that's another error that people can sometimes have where they might have a mismatch in their exposure times. Uh, but that mismatch is easily solved if you just load uh, the files using this custom frames uh, method here. So that is how all the buttons work. And again, I just want to summarize that I recommend use these three or four uh, buttons to load the files with your own mind and brain. But if you're comfortable and you understand that if there's any issue, you, of course, you can use the files and the directory button. Just be attentive to look in each of these places to see what was loaded.